Hello there, Jose Rodriguez once again. I want to talk a little bit about the Canon Pixma Pro 1 and the basically the lack of support that third-party companies have actually neglected to try to develop for it. And I think the reason, of course, is demand. There's not that many units out there by uh, purchased, especially in America, in the rest of the world probably, doesn't compare to the number of units that the Pro 100 was able to establish, or even the Pro 10. So the Pro 100 still took over a year for third-party support to be established. The Pro 10 took even longer than that, and the Pro 1 has just totally been neglected. So there's not really many options. In fact, I only have two that I can share with you. And those are to go to Alibaba and look up for compatible cartridges for the Pro 1. They are not that bad, folks. They actually do work. And they run around 10 to $12 each, which is a lot more than whatever they co these things will cost, the OEM ones will cost. I have one gentleman that's the moderator of the Print Knowledge Forum, and his name is Brian, just to tell you that much. He's in Ireland, and he's a Pro 1 owner, and he has been experimenting to the point where I think he actually broke it. But at any, at any rate, he knows everything there is about the Pro 1 and how to get the most out of it. He has tried to disable ink monitoring and that was <coughs> a mistake according to him because it causes these uncontrollable cleaning cycles to take place. And so it's a huge waste of ink. He's even developed a couple of the grays from traditional Canon gray ink or light gray to be able to complete the 12 color ink palette that this printer uses, not this one, the Pro One. This one uses the same inks. The difference being the Pro One has three grays. This uses only one gray. So the Pro One will have dark gray, gray, and light gray. This only uses gray. All right. So you would have to take gray ink, mix it with a little photo black, do some swatches on paper, it's very difficult to get a good match and try to create some sort of homemade light gray and dark gray inks. He's done it. He did it and it works. And he was using it until finally the printer just kind of succumbed to his uh, work with it, we'll say. All right, so again, the only other option is to buy these compatible cards from China and just use them. They're single use. You got to toss them after you're done because there's no way to reset those chips. Okay, now, what about ink? Well, I was hoping that Precision Colors would develop an ink set for it, but again, because of the lack of demand, I think at this point it's sort of off the burner. So, he has a set for the Pro 10, so all that would be needed would be a dark gray and a light gray, and that would complete the, the ink set that you would need. And that would solve that problem as far as ink goes. Now, what about chips? Well, nothing can be done. There's no resetter available. And these original chips, they go dead after they go empty. It's like the uh, chips on a uh, Epson R1900 and up. Basically, what happens is that they have a wet sensor inside the cart body that senses when ink has been depleted and it shorts it out. And that's it. You can reset the chip. It looks like it's being reset, but the printer will never be able to read it because it cannot make that internal connection with the wet ink anymore. So that's a pretty slick way to uh, prevent you from resetting these types of chips that have inks or wet sensors in them. The only way you could do that is to reset them prior to the cart going empty. All right. But then you got to be really super diligent. Well. With the Pro 1, this is a Pro 10. I keep pointing at it, but it's a Pro 10. Pro 1. <laughs> the same thing may be happening as well. So if you allow these chips to go basically dry, they're no longer workable. The, regardless of what hack you try to apply to them, it will not work. So what is your other option? Single-use chips. They're available from China. They run approximately one 
dollar and twenty five cents a piece to as high as two dollars and something. So it depends where you order them from. And if you're going to really get into this for the Pro One, I suggest you order several sets of these. And basically you just remove them and apply them with a little bit of sticky tape or some silicon caulk. And that way you'll be able to remove them at the end and replace them with a new set of chips. Now, what about inks? Well, like I said, you could concoct your own set. You can get inks for this printer and then just sort of... Uh, make your own dark gray or light gray or you can just use gray on all three channels and hope for the best or you can go to inkjet carts inkjetcarts.us actually has an ink set that they put together for the pro one they just don't have any way for you to reset the carts that's up to you that is your problem and basically i guess they expect you to disable ink monitoring and continue using these carts they also sell you a special tip. It's a very long tip that needs to be used to refill this. These cartridges allow you to refill them. No problem whatsoever. They just know you can't reset them. So they're not, they don't even care about you being able to refill them. And of course, if you disable ink monitoring, they're just laughing at you because it will cause all sorts of problems in the future. So that's where we are at. I am in the process of trying to make up my mind whether I really want to go ahead and get, why do I point at that? Get a Pro One. <laughs> now, why would I be on the fence about that? Because, guys, the Epson P800 problem with third party support may have reached the end. And I think there will be some support for it in the way of refillable carts with auto reset chips. Wow that is where we are at now and we are waiting for the last word and testing to begin and that way you will be able to use those cards directly without the need of your original OEM chips that's unheard of usually the 3800 3880 requires you to have controller chips above your OEM chips not anymore I hope that's the case and I hope it proves to work 100% so that it can be made available and that ladies and gentlemen will be the printer I will get next and thank you guys for all the support you've been giving me because that's, that's going to make this next step really easier and allow me to do that without bankrupting my budget which is what I've been doing in the last several years so that's awesome and so that'll be the next um, step for the channel to take on and if that is the case, if that proves to be the, the actual case, I will then be doing a complete series of videos on that particular printer, as well as this one here. And finally, this is the Pro 10. Yes, that's the one I will be continuing making some videos for. I know there's a lot of you guys that own this printer as well. So that's where we are at right now. And I want to thank you guys for all the support. Everything is going up and just wonderful. All right, so until the next time, Happy printing. Bye-bye. Oh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye-bye.